Hey everyone, this is Grace from Kapwing, and today I'm going to show you how to add an end screen to your YouTube videos. I'll first go over how to make a perfectly sized end screen graphic using a free online template, and then I'll go over how to actually add the clickable elements to your video in the YouTube settings. This is the sixth episode in our YouTube channel art series. Subscribe so you can stay up to date with the rest of the series, and stick around to see how to make your end screen after the intro. End screens help increase watch time because they divert viewers from the video they're currently watching to another one of your videos on your channel or to complete some call to action that you're providing like subscribing. I'm gonna first go over a few tips and best practices so that you can make effective YouTube end screens from the get-go. My first tip is to keep in mind that you can add up to four elements onto your end screen when you're uploading the video in your YouTube settings. So these elements can include videos on your channel or playlists on your channel, a subscribe button to your channel or a subscribe button to another channel or an associated website. When you're making your actual end screen graphic, you want to make sure that you're factoring in where these elements are going to be relative to other graphics on your end screen. And our template will help us do that. Related to that, you don't want to overwhelm your viewers. I would suggest adding the subscribe graphic so that viewers can easily subscribe to your channel and then also maybe one or two video or playlist watch buttons. My second tip when you're creating your graphic is to make sure it's in line with your branding. You don't want the viewers to go from watching your video to to seeing this other random end screen graphic that they don't really connect with your video at all and don't actually click anything on the end screen. You want the end screen to be as seamless with the rest of the video and with your bigger channel as it can be and that means using your brand colors, your logo, your graphics, and your fonts. And then my last tip for creating these end screens is that when you're adding the clickable elements in the YouTube settings, you want to recommend relevant videos on your end screen. If you are going to manually select videos to recommend to the viewer, it would be best to select ones that are connected to the video they just watched somehow. For example, if it's a series, you could do the next video in the series or the previous one in the series. If it connects to a topic you previously talked about, you could add that video. All right, with those tips in mind, let's go and actually start making our end screen graphic. Just click the first link in the description below and you'll be taken to our free online template. So this template has the placeholders for your end screen elements. You can just space out everything and add your background, text, images, all in this editor to create your graphic. So just go ahead and click make it and I'm just gonna orient you a little bit to how this template works. So on the top toolbar, you have your upload button, text, images, so you can find text and images there. And then anything you add, like this text box here, there will be options on the right side to actually adjust how that looks. In terms of where you want to place different elements for the end screen's purpose, when you upload your video to YouTube and add the actual clickable elements onto the end screen, there's only a certain area on the screen where you can add those elements and th that would be represented by this box. So this darker gray box that says end screen elements within this box, you wanna make sure that all the end screen elements will be fitting in here. You can still include non end screen elements like text and images in the background in this outside border where it's not within the box but you can't add something like a video out here. Then these different shapes represent the different elements you can add to the end screen. So this circle is the exact size of the subscribe to your channel icon that will be created if you added that element. And then this rectangle is the size that a video or a playlist element would be on the end screen. As I said earlier, you can add up to four different end screen elements to your video in the YouTube settings. And having these placeholders here are just a good way to guide where your graphics go in relation to your other images and text in the end screen graphic. So if you wanted to duplicate it, if say if you wanted to have three videos shown and then a subscribe button, that makes four elements. There are two videos here and then to copy, you can copy and paste one of these boxes to represent another video. And to copy, you can just do Command C and then Command V to paste. Same with the circle element. If you wanted to make another channel icon subscribe button element, just copy and paste that circle. And then you would have these four. So the first step in creating your end screen is to decide how many elements you want on the screen and where they will be. So as I said, just make sure that you have up to four and then that they're not spaced overlapping. You cannot overlap the elements, like this would not be able to, you won't be able to do that 
in uh, the YouTube settings. So they have to have amp ample space around them. And then they have to be within this box that I specified earlier. Now at the end, when you're done with your end screen, you can just delete this box and then delete this text box. I'm gonna show an example for the channel I'm setting up called Grace's Place. I want to have just one channel subscribe button icon represented by this circle. And then I'm also just gonna show one video suggestion just to make it easier for viewers so they can just make a decision to either watch it or not, subscribe or not, and leave. And it's not too overwhelming for them. So these are the two shapes I'm gonna be working with as my placeholders. And the way I want to orient it is I'll have my subscribe button over here and then the video recommendation here. To make it more in line with my brand and customize it to my channel, I'm gonna add some text and graphics and colors that match with my brand. For images, you can either upload your own images here or click images to search for images from Google. I have an image that I already own, so I'm gonna go navigate to that. So this is a graphic I used in my channel banner and then also in my intro. And if you want to learn more about making those assets, then you can check out the other videos in our series for that. So as you can see, it has this white border around it, which I don't want in the actual final product. So I'm gonna click that and we have an image eraser on the side here. So if you click erase, you'll be taken to the eraser. And there are two options for erasing. The magic wand erases more efficiently. So all I have to do is click and drag. And as you can see, it selects all the white. And if I hit delete on my keyboard, it is gone. Then you can go in with something like the freehand erase tool here. And I, you can see there's a very faint white border and the erase tool just erases what you move over. So I'm just gonna move over that border, delete those white pixels. And then I'm also gonna go in with my magic wand and then delete more of this white part in here. So this looks pretty good to me. It's looking like a PNG transparent image. I'm gonna click done now. And there it is, it brings it right into the editor. Now I'm also going to change the background. So right now this is just a blue gradient image that I found. I'm gonna delete that. And then I'm gonna go search in the images tab for a pastel gradient. Uh, I like this one that shows up. I'm gonna click that and it brings it into this editor. And then I'm gonna resize with these purple dots. And then I'm also gonna have to send it backward. This button in the corner right here and you can send it behind all the other stuff. Most YouTube viewers will know that when you have these elements, like the video shown here, that they can click the video and go watch it or click the subscribe button. But some viewers that are newer to YouTube might not know that. So I'm gonna add some text labels to my end screen to just make it clear what these buttons even are. So I'm gonna add text that says subscribe. So I'm just gonna go up here, click text, and then I, I'm gonna edit the text and I have my options on the right side for changing the font and the colors and things like that. Now, I, for the color, I want it to match a color in this canvas and I want it to match this purplish color. So if you want to do that, match a color that's on the canvas already, even if you don't know the hex code, you can just click the text box and then click this eyedropper icon under text color. And whatever you roll over and click, that text box will become that color. So I'm gonna roll over this purple and then it changes the text to that color now. So it looks more in line with the rest of the canvas. So this is looking pretty good. I think one more element I want to add is just a little tape strip behind these labels just to make it more visually appealing and just adding a little more texture. So I'm gonna go to images and I use this in my YouTube banner as well. So you probably will remember it from that episode. Uh, tape strip. PNG and adding PNG to your search will make sure that more options come up that are actually PNGs with transparent backgrounds. So like for example, this is a PNG because it has no white uh, or any background behind it. I'm gonna click that one and then use these dots to resize down to the size of my words. And then I'm gonna use the same send backward button so that it is behind. There we go. Awesome, so I'm gonna copy that tape strip and then put it behind these words as well and making sure it lines up using the red lines. I'm done with my end screen now. My end screen element placeholders represented by the black boxes and the circle are within this border of the end screen elements area. So I think I'm good to go. I'm gonna delete these placeholders and guidelines. You can either choose to keep the actual circle and square in the final end screen, or you can delete them. 
up to you. I think I'll just keep them just to show later on what it would look like. And then once you're finished and ready to go, just click export image. You'll be waiting on this loading page for a few moments as your project processes, and then your end screen will be done. So this is my final end screen. Uh, if there is a watermark in the corner that says Kapwing, just sign into your account for free and that watermark will be removed. And then to save it to your computer, just click download. Now to actually add this end screen to your video, you can just upload the image to add your choice of video editor, add it to the end. So to demonstrate, I just created a video here in my projects in Kapwing. And so I am going to go into the timeline tab here to show the full video. So this is my intro and then my other clips and the end screen will go at the end. So your end screen has to last at least five seconds and maximum can last 20 seconds. And to add an end screen onto a video, your video has to be at least 25 seconds long. So looking down here, my video, it says it's 26 seconds, which just hits the mark. I'm going to upload my image now. So clicking to upload and finding that downloaded file. And it shows up as this layer down here. So just make sure that you drag it down to at least five seconds, less than 20 seconds, and put it at the end of your video. So my layer here lasts around five seconds. I'm just gonna make it a little longer just to be sure. So then the flow of how it works is that your, view, your viewer will be watching the video and then it will turn into your end screen and then you'll have the elements on top. I'm gonna click done here and then export my video to upload to YouTube now. Okay, so my video is done loading. I'm gonna click download to save it. And then we're gonna go to youtube.com and upload it and add the end screen clickable elements in the settings now. So head to youtube.com, then just click this upload create button and click upload video. Select your video file first and then it will start uploading. And while you're doing that, you can add your title, description, thumbnail, whatever else. I'm just gonna put in some random placeholder settings to get to the end screen. Uh, stay tuned for our thumbnail episode. It's going to be the next episode in this series. And then I'm just gonna go next here. Now this is where you can add your end screen and then other cards. So to add an end screen, I just go add placeholder templates. This one actually fits my, what I want and what I added in my end screen template the best. It's one video and one subscribe button. I'm just gonna click this one. And then down here is the timeline of your end screen elements related to your video. So this bar is the video, and then each of these corresponds to one of the end screen elements. So you can see where in the video your end screen actually starts, which is right here at 26 seconds for me. I'm gonna push all these things, all these end screen elements down to there so that when the end screen starts is when the elements come on the screen. And some people make the end screen elements come onto the screen earlier so viewers can see them sooner in the video and then have that end screen graphic come up behind it. Uh, but that's really up to you. So if you click to somewhere later in the video on the end screen section, you will be able to see the preview of what is happening on screen. So I actually need to move these elements around so that they match where I put them on the uh, actual graphic. I'm gonna just click and drag this over and if you see this red uh, appearing, that means that your elements are over overlapping and there's an error message up here. You won't be able to go forward with this because you need to make them not overlap. So I'm just gonna make sure that they're not overlapping and move them to where their little shapes are placed on the screen. So you can see that it perfectly fits uh, and covers those elements. With the video and screen elements, you can actually increase their size uh, up to this big. Um, and this is the minimum size. And then if you're having trouble placing the elements where you want, there's different settings in this, uh, if you click this little grid, snap to grid, snap to element, those make sure that you're snapping to certain parts. So I can only move it in like specific chunks. If you don't want those uh, features on, then just turn them off. Now, if you have a video or playlist, you can choose what video or playlist is recommended and shown to the viewer on this left side here. So the most recent upload is an option, best for viewers, another option, and then you could choose specific videos. So if you click that, you'll be able to choose a video. And then if you do wanna add other elements, uh, you can just also click this. So this looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna click save now, and then I'm gonna hit next and just make this public for now and publish the video. Let's go see what it looks like. So this is the video. I'm just gonna skip ahead to the end and here we go. This is where the end screen will pop up. And there it is. And your end screen elements appear. 
I can go click this video now and it takes me to the video to watch it. Then if viewers roll over this, there's a subscribe button. Thanks for watching this video. If you got this far, please leave a comment below telling us how many elements you added to your end screen. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to see the rest of the series and stay up to date with Kapwing. In the next episode of this series, we are making YouTube thumbnails. This has been highly requested, so stay tuned to hear our tips. Let us know if you have any other comments or ideas or questions, and we'll see you in the next one.